In this edition of Back in History, we bring you the history of the 5th military coup in Nigeria. Sheu Shagari was Nigeria's first elected president. He was also the first elected president in Nigeria to be toppled in a military coup. In this edition, we take you back in time to the events of the 5th military coup in Nigeria. It was this coup that brought Major General Muhammadu Buhari to power as military head of states. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. The date was 31st December 1983. Nigerians were preparing to cross over to the new year. Sheu Shagari had just won a second term to continue in office as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having completed the first term which started on 1st October 1979. Unknown to him, he was not going to be allowed to serve a second term. A military coup was on the way and the coup plotters had already taken their strategic positions at different places and ready to strike. Without any further delay, the coup plotters struck and removed President Shehu Shagari from power. The identity of the coup plotters, which was hitherto unknown, soon became known, starting with the announcement of Major General Muhammadu Buhari as the new military head of Nigeria. Shagari was immediately arrested and detained by the coup plotters. His tenure was thus brought to a conclusive end, and Nigeria, a country that had already witnessed four military coups in less than 25 years of its independence, was taken back to full military rule. While Major General Muhammadu Buhari became the head of state, Major General Tunde Idiabon was the deputy head of state. Tunde Idiabon was an alumni of the Pakistan Military Academy where he obtained a bachelor's degree in economics. He is said to have been a no-nonsense military officer by all reasonable standards, and his name featured prominently throughout the administration of Major General Muhammad Buhari. It has been reported that prior to the coup, tension was already escalating between the civilian administration of Shehu Shagari and some persons in the military. One major incident was when General Buhari, as commanding officer of the 3rd Division of the Nigerian Army, cut off fuel and food supplies from entering neighboring Chad without the consent and authorization of President Shagari. The stoppage of fuel and food supplies was caused by some border disputes which had occurred between Nigeria and Chad. It is reported that President Shagari was unhappy that such decision was taken by Buhari without the courtesy of informing the President and Commander-in-Chief of the armed forces. Buhari ignored orders not to enter into Chadian territory any further. According to a Nigerian historian, Omogwe Noa, in his book, History of Civil-Military Relations in Nigeria. He noted, this tension was one of the major contributing factors to the coup as it placed the civilian government and military on opposite sides of a highly divisive issue. The plot to remove Shagari from power was then hatched. Like minds were selected and assigned with roles in the coup. Colonel Tunda Obeha was drafted into the coup plot. His role was to negotiate a peaceful surrender of Shagari's brigade of guards to pave way for an easy removal of the president. Tunda Obeha did all he could to have a meeting with Colonel Bello Khalil, the then commander of the brigade of guards, and discuss the plan with him to no avail. Brigadier Ibrahim Bako was also drafted into the plot. 
He was assigned with the role of arresting President Shagari after the Brigade of Guard would have surrendered. At that time, there were no mobile phones in the country, and so communication was not easy as it is today. Brigadier Bako then arrived at Shegu Shagari's residence on the belief that Tunde Obeha had successfully negotiated the surrender of the Brigade of Guards. Unknown to Bako, Tunde Obeha was unable to broker a surrender. Bako did not also know that the coup plot had leaked to the president and to the principal officers in the Brigade of Guard, who were then prepared to repel any form of attack. As soon as Brigadier Bako arrived at the presidential villa, he was shot and killed by soldiers from the Brigade of Guards. The reason Bako was the one chosen to arrest Shagari was the fact that Bako's father was a close friend to Shagari and Bako was well known to Shagari and the co-plotters were of the opinion that Shagari would easily be arrested by someone whom he knew personally. Despite the killing of Brigadier Bako, the coup went on through the surviving officers and Shagari was removed from power and Major General Muhammad Buhari was ushered in as a new head of state. Shagari was immediately placed under house arrest and stripped of all paraphernalia of power. Most of his ministers were arrested, detained for several months, and made to first trial in several parts of the country. One of the leading participants in the coup was Sane Abacha. Abacha has a history of participating in every successful military coup in Nigeria. When he started getting involved in coups, he was only a lieutenant in the army. In the Buhari Shagari coup, Abacha played a prominent role. He was a person who made the first radio broadcast upon the overthrow of Pre President Shagari. Here is a text of Abacha's broadcast. Unquote. Fellow countrymen and women, I, Brigadier Sane Abacha of the Nigerian Army, address you this morning on behalf of the Nigerian Armed Forces. You are all living witnesses of the great economic predicament and uncertainty which an inept and corrupt leadership has imposed on our beloved nation for the past four years. I am referring to the harsh, intolerable conditions under which we are now living. Our economy has been hopelessly mismanaged. We have become a debtor and beggar nation. There is inadequacy of food at reasonable prices for our people who are now fed up with endless announcements of importation of foodstuffs. Health services are in shambles as our hospitals are reduced to mere consulting clinics without drugs, water and equipment. Our educational system is deteriorating at an alarming rate. Unemployment figures, including the undergraduates, have reached embarrassing and unacceptable proportions. In some states, workers are being owed salary arrears of 8 to 12 months and in others, there are threats of salary cuts. Yet, our leaders revel in squandermania, corruption and indiscipline and continue to proliferate public appointments in complete disregard of our stark economic realities. After due consultation over these deplorable conditions, I and my colleagues in the armed forces have in the discharge of our national role as promoters and protectors of national interest decided to effect a change in the leadership of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and form a federal military government. This task has just been completed. The federal military government hereby decrees the suspension of the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1979 relating to all elective and appointive offices and representative institutions including the office of the President, State Governors, Federal and State Executive Councils, 
special advisors, special assistants, the establishment of the National Assembly, the Houses of Assembly, including the formation of political parties. Accordingly, Alajishehu Usman Shagari seizes forthwith to be the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. All the incumbents of the above-named offices shall, if they have not already done so, vacate their formal official residences, surrender all government property in their possession, and report to the nearest police station their constituencies within seven days. The Clerk of the National Assembly, the President of the Senate, and Speaker of the House of Representatives shall, within two weeks, render account of all the properties of the National Assembly. All the political parties are banned. The bank account of FEDECO and all the political parties are frozen with immediate effect. All foreigners living in any part of the country are assured of their safety and will be adequately protected. Henceforth, workers not on essential duties are advised to keep off the streets. All categories of workers on essential duties will, however, report at their places of work immediately. With effect from today, a dust to dawn curfew will be imposed between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. each day until further notice. All airways flights have been suspended forthwith and all airports, seaports and border posts are closed. External communications have been cut. The customs and excise, immigration and police will maintain vigilance and ensure watertight security at the borders. The area administrators or commanders will have themselves to blame if any of the wanted people escape. Fellow countrymen and women, the change in government has been a bloodless and painstaking operation and we do not want anyone to lose his or her life. People are warned in their own interests to be law-abiding to give the federal military government maximum cooperation. Anyone caught disturbing public order will be summarily dealt with. For avoidance of doubt, you are forewarned that we shall not hesitate to declare martial law in any area or state of the federation in which disturbances occur. Fellow countrymen and women and comrades at arms, I would like to assure you that the Armed Forces of Nigeria is ready to lay its life for our dear nation, but not for the present irresponsible leadership of the past civilian administration. You are to wait further announcements." Unquote. Those that participated in the coup were later identified as Major General Muhammadu Buhari, who at the time was the general officer commanding 3rd Armored Division, JOS. Major General Ibrahim Babangida, who was the Director of Army Staff Duties and Plans. Brigadier Ibrahim Bako, who was the Brigade Commander. Brigadier Sani Abacha, who was the Commander 9th Mechanized Brigade. Brigadier Tunde Idiabo, Lieutenant Colonel Aliyu Mohammed, who was the Director of Military Intelligence. Lieutenant Colonel Halilu Akilu, Lieutenant Colonel David Mack, Lieutenant Colonel Tundo Ubeha, Major Sambo Dasuki, Major Abdul Mumuni Aminu, Major Lawan Guadabe, Major Mustafa Jokolo, Major Bubaka Uma. About 14 hours after the first announcement, General Muhammad Buhari took to the radio station and made his speech as the new military head of states. In his words, and I quote, In pursuance of the primary objective of saving a great nation from total collapse, I, Major General Muhammadu Buhari of the Nigerian Army, have, after due consultation amongst the services of the armed forces, been formally invested with the authority of the head of state of the federal military government and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is with humility and a deep sense of responsibility that I accept this challenge and call and call to national duty. As you must have heard in the previous announcement, 
the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1979 has been suspended. The change became necessary in order to put an end to the serious economic predicament and crisis of confidence now afflicting our nation. Consequently, the Nigerian Armed Forces have constituted themselves into a federal military government comprising of a Supreme Military Council, a National Council of States, a Federal Military Council at the center. Fellow Nigerians who have dutifully intervened to save this nation from imminent collapse, we therefore expect all Nigerians, including those who participated directly and indirectly in bringing the nation to this present predicament to cooperate with us. These generation of Nigerians and indeed future generations have no other country than Nigeria. We shall remain here and salvage it together. May God bless us all." Unquote. Buhari then went on to appoint his key men, together with some of the co plotters to administer the affairs of the new government. He appointed military governors for the 19 states. The names of the governors were Alison Madweke, who was appointed as military governor of Anambra State, Mohamed Sani, who was appointed as military governor of Bauchi State, Jeremiah Oseni, who was appointed as military governor of Bendel State, John Quera, who was appointed military governor of Benue State, Abubakar Waziri, who was appointed military governor of Borono State, Dan Achibon, who was appointed military governor of Cross River State, Mohamed Jega, who was appointed military governor of Gongola State, Ike Nwachuku, who was appointed military governor of Imo State, Usman Moazu, who was appointed military governor of Kaduna State, Hamza Abdullahi, who was appointed military governor of Kano State, Salauddin Latingwo, who was appointed military governor of Kwara State. Bolahon Mudashiru who was appointed military governor of Lagos State. David Mack, military governor of Niger State. Oladik Bodia, military governor of Ogun State. Michael Bamidele, who was appointed military governor of Ondo State. Oladayo Popola, who was appointed military governor for your state. Samuel Atukum, who was appointed military governor of Plateau State. Fidelis Oyakilome, who was appointed as military governor of River State. And finally, Gaba Duba, who was appointed military governor of Sokoto State. It is worthy of note that Fidelis Oyaki Lome, the governor of River State, was the only police officer among the military governors. In an interview granted to Sun newspaper in 2019 by Major Mustafa Jokolo, who was the ADC to General Buhari, Jokolo noted that the first shocker to the co plotters was the announcement of the names of the 19 governors without the names of the co plotters. The only person that was appointed among the co plotters was David Mack, who was made the military governor of Niger State. The other person that was given a key appointment from among the co plotters was Ahmed Abdullahi, who was appointed the Minister of Communication. These developments did not go down well with the coup plotters, who risked their lives in high expectations of immediate key appointment from Major General Muhammad Buhari. It appears that the plan to remove Buhari from office as soon as practicable originated from Buhari's first appointments. The country was ruled through military decrees. This included the Robbery and Firearms Special Provisions Decree, which was promulgated to tackle the incidences of armed robbery at the time. The State Security Detention of Persons Decree, which gave powers to the military to detain individuals suspected of jeopardizing state security or causing economic diversity. Other decrees included the Civil Service Commission and Public Offenders Decree, which conducted a purge of the civil service. Other decrees were signed, authorizing the detention of citizens by the military without trial. Buhari's military administration also passed Decree No. 4, Protection Against False Accusations Decree, 
and Section 1 of the decree prohibited the publication of any rumor or unverified statement against the military government. Offending journalists and publishers were to be tried by military tribunals whose ruling were to be final and not subject to any appeal to any court in the land. These decrees were widely criticized at home and abroad. On the economic front, a couple of measures were taken by the military administration. State governors were prohibited from borrowing. Also, there was a 15% cut from Shagari's budget of 1983. Importation of a couple of items were banned. And in the process, several companies were unable to perform optimally, while others were forced to close in frustration for lack of needed raw materials. The economy continued to tighten and the smiles on the faces of Nigerian citizens kept disappearing every day. Wikipedia captures the situation as follows, unquote. General Buhari's economic policies did not earn him the legitimacy of the masses due to the rise in inflation and the use of military might to continue to push many policies blamed on the rise in food prices. The administration also closed the borders and passed the decree to regulate dealings in foreign exchange with stiff penalties for violators. The administration also launched a social orientation program known as War Against Indiscipline or WAI for short. Nigerians were made to stand on line at public places such as bus stops under the watchful eyes of whip-carrying soldiers. Civil servants who reported to work late were humiliated and forced to frog jump. This and many more did not go down well with a lot of people as it was considered unacceptable to treat adults in such demeaning ways. The administration thus received a lot of criticism from within and from outside the country. It has been reported that the cost of living was very high during Buhari's military administration. The Republic outcries and resentment from several quarters. In August 1985, Major General Muhammadu Buhari's military administration was overthrown by a group of soldiers led by General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. It was a bloodless coup. Buhari was immediately arrested and taken to Benin in present-day Edo State, where he was kept in detention for three years in a small guarded bungalow. He was given access to television that showed only two stations, and he was also given access to members of his family who were allowed to visit him. His day-to-day -day activities were heavily regulated by the military. The coup and immediate detention brought to an end the military rule of Major General Muhammad Buhari. Buhari was the fifth military head of state of Nigeria, born on 17 December 1942. Buhari is reported to have attended primary school in Daura, his ancestral home. He also attended Katsina Middle School and Katsina Provincial Secondary School. He then enrolled in the Nigerian Army in 1962 and underwent officer cadet training at Mons Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, England. In January 1963, he was commissioned the second lieutenant and appointed platoon commander of the second infantry battalion in Abeokuta. At the time of the making of this video in 2022, Muhammadu Buhari is serving his second term as elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is the second Nigerian citizen to occupy the number one office in the land, first as military head of state and later as civilian president. The first person to have occupied the same offices was General Olusegun Obasanjo, who is still alive at the time of the making of this video. Thank you for watching this episode of Back in History. 
and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.